You've hooked up your latest Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo game console, and you want to share your gameplay with friends, family, or the greater world on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Gaming, or maybe a new site like Glimish. While most consoles these days have a built-in streaming app, they leave a little bit to desired. Let's upgrade. Today we're covering the basics of streaming your console games to Twitch, YouTube, etc. from your computer. Let's take you from a boring, basic, gameplay-only stream from your console to a full, professional-looking stream quickly and easily. I'm Epos Fox, the Stream Professor, and welcome to a new console-oriented episode of Stream Guides, sponsored by EVGA. If you haven't already, before investing any money into streaming, I do recommend checking out the Twitch and YouTube streaming capabilities on your console. That is, if you're on PlayStation or Xbox. Unfortunately, the Nintendo Switch only has quick recording capabilities, not streaming. This will give you a feel for the process that you can expect, and if you're lucky, some chat interaction as well. This is a great way to get started, but with thousands of new streamers every year joining the trend, expectations for quality and presentation have gone up a bit. Let's upgrade your stream by using your computer and some OBS know-how. First, you'll need a couple things to make this happen. A computer will be needed to stream with a computer, of course. A laptop will work, though heat will be a concern and your laptop's fans may get loud, and it will need to be plugged into power, but a desktop computer is usually preferred. These days, you pretty much need Windows 10. Windows 7 is 12 years old and no longer supported by most devices releasing today and many programs as well. The actual specifications of your computer will matter a bit. I know this can be complicated and annoying to look at. Newer and higher end computers will perform best, but the easiest way to know if you'll have a reasonable time is to check what graphics card is in your system. This is the part of the computer that handles video related tasks, such as building your scene for your stream. Ideally, you want to have an NVIDIA GTX 1050 or newer, or an AMD RX 480 or newer. You can technically get away with something like an NVIDIA 950 or newer as well, but these will be a rougher experience overall. The easiest way to find out what graphics card is in your system is to right click the Windows taskbar, assuming you're on an updated copy of Windows 10, and click Task Manager. Click the Performance tab, it should be the second one. Then on the left hand column, scroll down and there should be a GPU listing. You may actually have two of these on a laptop, one for an Intel or AMD graphics built into your computer's processor, and one for the dedicated GPU, and that's fine. Another option is the free program Speccy, which lists your computer specs and will display your graphics cards under display. It's possible you don't have a dedicated graphics card at all. If so, you may still be able to get away with streaming if you have an Intel Core i5 or i7 processor, starting with an 8 or 9 or higher for the number. For example, an Intel Core i7-9700K. These have integrated graphics processors that can mostly handle the streaming process okay. Next, you'll need the all-important capture card. A capture card is a small device that takes the video output of your game console, in this case HDMI, and converts it to a video format that your computer can see and record or stream. This will be USB or an internal card that, for desktops that fits into the PCIe expansion slot. Some capture cards only have one HDMI plug and require an HDMI splitter for you to see your game on your TV. Some will have an HDMI pass-through port, which will allow you to connect it to your TV or monitor as you always have to see your game in real time. For this video, we're using the EVGA XR1 capture card, as EVGA was kind enough to sponsor this video. This is a neat little capture card that connects over USB, passes through your game back out to your TV or monitor, and lets you connect audio to your controller to capture party chat or in-game audio. The XR1 is OBS certified, which is great since we're using OBS Studio for this stream. It's got a striking look as well. You can use any capture card, I've reviewed many on my YouTube channel, but the XR1 is great for newcomers and comes with everything else you need for connections in the box. So you get a second HDMI cable to connect back to your TV, a USB cable for connecting the card to your computer, and an audio aux cable for connecting to your controller should you wish to use that for audio. The EVGA XR1 also supports 4K pass-through, meaning if you have a fancy 4K TV, you can still game in 4K on your Xbox One X, Xbox Series X or PlayStation 4 Pro or PS5 while still capturing or streaming in 1080p or 720p. Nice. The XR1 works best if you have an available USB 3.0 port on your computer, but it will still work with USB 2 as well, just at worse quality and it's usually not advised. Although a lack of USB 3 ports usually indicates that your PC may not be up to spec for streaming in 2021. USB 3 started rolling out in 2010, by the way. 
To get started, I recommend using a gaming headset. You may already have one that you use for your console anyway. You can plug your headset directly into the headset port on the XR1 capture card and then plug the aux cable from the XR1 to your controller and still use in-game voice and party chat and let your stream hear it as well, which is very useful. If your headset has the two plugs, one for headphones and one for microphone, you can buy a super cheap adapter to convert them back down to the singular plug to plug into the capture card, but you would have need this, needed this for your controller anyway, so you probably already have it. You can, of course, just use headphones and a dedicated microphone for your stream, probably over USB connected to your computer. However, doing so leaves no easy way to get the microphone audio back to your console for party chat, so keep that in mind if that's important to you. It's not for everyone. If you don't plan on using party chat and just want to hear your game in your headphones, then you can just plug your headphones into the headphone jack on the XR1 as usual. This capture card has a very high quality headphone amp inside, so you may find that your games sound better than ever once you're using it. Let's hook everything up. You need to connect one HDMI cable from the video out jack of your console to the HDMI in port on your capture card. Then connect a second HDMI cable from the HDMI out port on your capture card to your TV or dedicated monitor for playing your games. Next, connect the USB cable from your capture card to your PC. Try to use USB 3 ports on the back of your computer rather than the front if possible. If you want to use headphones or a headset, connect them to the capture card on the headset side of the inputs. Run the aux cable to your controller if you're using party chat. If you just want normal gain sound, you do not need to connect to your controller. Now that everything is hooked up, turn everything on. On your computer, we need a free program for streaming and recording called OBS Studio. This is by far my favorite program for all things capturing, streaming, and video making. It's free and open source, so anyone can use it. Head on over to obsproject.com and download the installer and run it. Once installed, run OBS Studio. The first time OBS Studio opens, it should prompt you with the Auto Configuration Wizard. This is a quick and easy way to get your settings ready to go without diving too deep into, into the complicated nerdy details. If this didn't show up for you, click Tools at the top and choose Auto Configuration Wizard from the menu. This presents you with options for what your goals are, recording, streaming, a mix of both. Follow the prompts and it will generate what it estimates to be the best settings for your PC. Boom. Easy peasy. Now, you may be thinking, cool, but I just have a black screen. Well, have no fear. This is the blank canvas for which to build your stream. There's endless possibilities for the way that you can build your stream layouts, the different scenes involved, but for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna set up a singular scene with your gameplay shown and a note on how to add your webcam on top of the gameplay if you wish to use one. If you want to learn more about setting up scenes and sources, etc., I highly recommend checking out my OBS Masterclass linked below, which walks you through everything you could possibly need to know about OBS Studio. We're covering the very basics here. First, let's add your capture card so that we can see your console. At the bottom of your OBS window, towards the left, you should see two boxes. Scenes with a blank Scene 1 already listed and Sources, which should be empty. Scenes are different layouts you can configure, but we're not focusing on that. We're just building one today, so we're just going to leave that alone. However, under your Sources list, click the plus icon to add a new source. Click Video Capture Device. This is how we're going to find our capture card. From the drop-down menu, choose EVGA XR1 Capture Box Video and click OK. If you're using a USB or other separate microphone that is not attached to the XR1, you'll have to go to Settings and then Audio and choose that microphone under Mic Aux Device there. Otherwise, with your microphone and possibly party chat connected to the capture card, you can use the dial on the card itself to adjust your volume. Pressing to the left will adjust your mic in volume. Pressing to the right will allow you to adjust the party chat audio volume as well. Pressing the button all the way down into the capture card will mute your microphone outright. When you're not adjusting settings, the default LED indicators show a solid white when it detects a proper USB 3.0 connection and solid red when your mic is muted. You can, however, adjust lighting modes by pressing up and down on the dial on the XR1 and choosing from the lighting presets as well. Now, add your webcam or any other sources you want to your scene. A webcam would also be a video capture device, and then you can just use the default settings once you find it. Consider using one of the one-click stream layouts from our friends over at Nerd or Die if you want some cool graphics. I have a video on that linked below as well. Next, let's do a couple test recordings and check audio levels. Make sure everything is balanced and all of that and adjust as needed. Test, test, and more test. Once you're ready, it's time to link OBS to your stream. Go to Settings, Stream. 
If you're using Twitch, you can choose Twitch from the menu and sign in with your account to get linked up and get some cool extra docs for chat or for changing your stream settings directly in OBS. For YouTube, you will have to go to your live control room settings on YouTube and copy over your stream key and input that here. Now here's the fun part. Stream, play your games, chat with your friends or your viewers, and have fun. Create something awesome. Whether you're gaming on Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, or PC, streaming is a great way to connect with a new community and have a blast. Better yet, you can combine your streaming with the existing record that capabilities of your game console to have a quick or funny or exciting clips recorded on the console itself to share online without having to hunt them down from your stream VOD later, which a lot of people end up losing the momentum to do. I'll have a link below for the EVGA or XR1 capture card if you want to pick one up for yourself. Use affiliate code EPOSFOX to save up to 10% at checkout too, just for my subscribers. For more stream guides and tech education, subscribe and check out my channel page for everything you could need to know about streaming. Join us on Discord at discord.gg EPOSFOX for more help and tips. I'm EPOSFOX, your stream professor, and I'll see you in the next one.